Okay. All right. Hopefully I'm live and let's get started. Let me check that all the settings are correct. And here's the instrument which we will be trying to fix. So I can show what it looks like. So you can see here it's pretty much the whole input was destroyed. And yeah, this is the protection. Uh, Yep, varistors and some of the chest discharge tubes which are lifted. You can see all the charged PCB. And we don't know what happened on the input, but obviously it was either high voltage, high current, or something like that. Also, this is the almost the worst type of the repair because we don't know what other components are destroyed and how far the damage is all right uh, i can show some other photos so here we can also see this resistor 699 you have a bl black hole right in center so this resistor is one of the input dividers for some ranges and also I actually and by the way this is Keithley 2182A updated version nanovolt meter I can show the front panel. Here it is. That's the unit. So that's what we will be trying to fix. And I also printed the Keithley service manual. This manual is not very thick. And of course, as with most of the current instruments, it talks just about the calibration. We can go through it and maintenance, user placement. It have the block, couple block diagrams. Uh, let me show you. So it just briefly it talks about what's the power supply section of the instrument then all the digital section there we go so we have pretty typical for Keithley instruments 68000 CPU, optical isolation, analog circuitry trigger, GPAB, display interface all the usual stuff but when we get to the block diagram of the analog design so it's, this is the best schematics as we can get there is nothing else and this is dual channel instrument so we can see let me show brief, briefly so we have the input protection channel 1 high, channel 1 low channel 2 low, channel 2 high and it, there is also some auto calibration circuitry and there is protection on each one of those so that's what we saw those this destroyed parts on the pcb then we have some switches to select which range we want to use some buffer 
bootstrap amplifier for guarding all the sensitive signals. And then we have the main two path and main low noise amplifier with U24624. Then we have some reversal, polarity reversal for reduce the EMF. Some amplifier, low noise preamplifier. Select the ranges amplification, so by one, by five, by 100. And then all the signal output from the amplifier goes all the way to the main switch, this guy. And then goes amplified further and connect to an AD converter. So this is the block diagram. And then the manual just very briefly very briefly talks about what the functionality is. We have some power supply checks, another power analog circuit checks. So there are a couple test points which switches are used for which range disassembly which is just handling and carrying of the boards replaceable parts so this is helpful this is actually the bomb list of all the parts used in the meter it's not very accurate but it's better than nothing so it goes pretty much about all the assemblies in the board and then there are specifications and there is nothing else calibration commands calibration example that's it there is no schematics so how we would approach the instrument repair like this without the schematics well i guess one way to do it is to make one. So I was busy with this for almost about a week. And I reverse engineered pretty much most of the instrument. Just using DMM in the continuity mode and probing the points. So this would give me pretty close what we can work with so you can see the input there's that protection network input filtering this is red is channel one high this one is channel two high channel two low and channel one low to connect to the protected or and also to the common ground So what we can uh, tell from now that this stuff all was destroyed and damaged and then the energy went either to this 10 megaohm 100k divider for 100 volt range so it could be this section could be damaged as well and then the rest it goes pretty much through the protection, channel 1 path and go all the way to the input uh, range selection uh, and low noise amplifier section so there are G main JFET stage it's selected parts by Tiffany for matching there is LM394 uh, dual BGT and then the rest of the circuitry so there is the reversal for the polarity based on the tg444 as an analog switch and then goes to the main uh, low noise amplifier L lna and then all this goes eventually to the gain amplifier which use another JFET stage. It's 
dual match two SK one seventy together with the LM three nine four, another one, and some other circuitry. It connects to the gain amplifier and goes to the ADC. And ADC section is exactly the same as used in P3000. So this was already I uh, just uh, cleaned it up and refined it. So it's used LM399 reference. Typical to other PF2000 series instruments. Use two amplifiers to generate plus minus reference voltages. PF245 generate additional signals for current. And here we have SD5400 quad uh, MOSFET switch and control logic for it. And then this is integrating ADC multi slope. So it's used the integrator based on OP177 and AD744. Then goes to the gain stage on NE5434. 5534, I'm sorry. And then goes to the comparator and go to the uh, gate array to convert into digital. So there is no problem with ADC. I already checked. It's working fine. We can get the readings. So we can skip this part for now and focus on the input front end. So, my current uh, strategy would be to supply known voltage, maybe like 1 volt or 100 millivolts, and see what, what happens after the gain stage amplifications and diminutions. I already replaced a bunch of parts in the meter. And hopefully we'll see how it goes. I hope the sound is okay. Okay. Sounds good. So let's go take a look on what I I replaced. So first I can show you what's happening with the meter, probably. So let's have a nice screen. This is just a protective film, uh, so don't worry about that. And we'll get some reading. So it's not, there is no other smoke or anything. Right now there is nothing connected to the input. We have channel 2. So at least the digital section and ADC is working. But it's doing all the random stuff. So... Let me show you what parts I've replaced. First I'll change the lens. Okay. Here we go. So first off, what I did is repair the input. As you can see, I had some, some patching to do. Probably I'll show better on the static photo, which I took earlier. Uh, 
Uh, let me find the photo. Here we are. So this is after some scrubbing and cleaning already. And this trace uh, on the right side is uh, a low ground. So it goes, it went actually through here, connects to this node. And this is the SA652. I can show that on the schematics. Actually, this should be six five two. You can see schematics still need a little bit of work. So this is just ground return. And here is the, here it is. Then there is the same ground used for the protection on the uh, all the other inputs. And you can see the main discharge. This is the channel one input. There was a GDT here, and it got destroyed. You can see the charred PCB under it, and then all the most of the damage happened right over here. So this VI is destroyed, uh, and yeah, and because the black PCB material is actually a carbon, so it's conductive. And this is high impedance meter, so this would all need to be removed. And to do that, I used a hand tool and milled about half a millimeter of the PCB surface to get away, to get all the black stuff out. So we would not have leakage across this PCB area. There is still some cleaning need to do there, but for now it's good enough. So after I did that, I put back, uh, I ordered the DGK parts, brand new, and here is what I have resulted with. So I have this uh, copper wire to connect the LO, then there is empty space, empty spot for the protection, RVE652, I didn't install it now. For the sake of testing, it doesn't matter, but later, if the instrument is all working, I'll populate the right component in here. Then there are some uh, 1 kilovolt protection caps, and some more, and brand new gas discharge tube. So that's, that's about it. And then for the rest of the input, uh, I also, as you can see here, I removed this is the high voltage divider that resistor we were uh, looking at the schematic set 9.9 .9 mega ohm and um, 100k. So, because I don't uh, really need that range now for testing, I removed it and we will test it later if it's damaged or not. So that's and then uh, input stage. Let me show you picture of the input stage. So here we have the signal going on the input uh, on the top. This is the big uh, MOSFET. It's the protection. Uh, MOSFETs on the channel 1 and these two smaller ones are channel 2. Channel 2 use only up to 10 volts so it doesn't need this high energy high voltage uh, BP size MOSFETs. Then there is some control for them using the optocoupler, the small ones. Then there is a missing uh, DG4444 and some amplifiers, LP2A2, LTC 1050 chopper. So some more solution, and this is the main, uh, this is the input uh, path A, path B. 
and this is the low noise selected amplifier pair. So the previous instrument, uh, hit the 2182. Oh, what happened? Hit the 8120, uh, 2182 had only one of those uh, chopper pairs, and improved a version have two of them but they are all parallel together so this is just to bring the lower noise and actually i do have completely repaired and working 81 80 21 82 i keep confusing the name let me show you it's right now doing some testing to make sure it's all stable and nice so in the worst case we could use that meter as a reference to verify the functions so i can leave the camera so here's the unit measuring my 10 volts reference using both of the channels channel 1 and channel 2 All right, let's go back to the box. There we go. So I think we can go ahead and connect the input uh, signal and see what it shows Okay, and as a source, I'll use uh, Fluke uh, 5700A calibrator. And the reason for that is because I want to also use low frequency AC input to verify if it's uh, like if there is any oscillation with the input stage or op amp because actually I use different components uh, instead of selected JPEGs I used uh, this guy right in there, informatic can that's the linear system CLSK 389A I use only one for now just to verify the function All right, and that's what I'll do now. Connect the Connect the input. Okay. 
we probably can hear the noise of the calibrator. So we'll just use the insulated wire. And connect it to the meter. So the input connection, uh, let me show again where it goes. So we have the black point right over there, uh, behind this side, and the, oh, sorry, black here and red. That's the input for channel 1. So I'll put it in and see what it shows. Okay. So, we're connect it. Now we can Let's get let's check. So right now calibrator output is off. And on the meter. Select base 10 volt range. Here we go. Channel one. It's set to zero volts, and output is on. Output off, output on. So we can see it's going 90 millivolts and jumping around. Uh, 
So I can supply one wolf right now. So we get something. I supply zero volts. Set the relative mode. And set one volt again. So okay, we are reading pretty close. But there is a big offset. So this is lower range. I can set zero volts again. And enable uh, disable relative. You can see the big offset, 13 millivolts. Set it to relative and supply one volt again. Okay, so it's reading something. Let's see if supply 0.1 volt. Okay, negative 1 volt. So it reads both polarities. 0 volt again. How about. Um, 10 millivolt overflow. It's overflow. All right. We can set. Output open. Hundred millivolts and set. Well, yeah. So you can see a lot of jumping around. That shouldn't happen. Hundred millivolt. So we can set rate. So even with the 5N PLC, you can see it's all jumping around. Let's try on 10 volts. Zero volt. Now we can supply 10 volts. So we get 9.69. Okay. Well, at least we know that ADC is working indeed, and there is no blue smoke escaping anywhere, and we can go ahead and troubleshoot to see what's going on with the signal. I can set also auto zero disable. in case there is some issue with the auto zero function. Don't feel fair, no. Auto zero, no. And we can do the same experiment, zero volts. Well. 10 volts, so we get about the same. Let's probe some signals, shall we? So, what I can, I'm interested in is to check the Basically, what happens after the low noise amplifier? So, 
for that. I want to probe this point, TP651. This is the preamp output. And we should expect nice stable signal there, I think. And that node is right this post in there. So we can connect the scope at the input and at that output point and see what it shows. And by the way, here is the amount of parts I already removed from the meter. So, yeah. Connect our probe. And here's our input. And here's our amplifier output. I think I can get the scope picture in the camera. So we can see what's going on. So, channel 3 is our signal from the calibrator and channel 1 is the amplifier output. So, probably will be more interesting to apply low frequency AC so we can see if those waveforms match. I'll use one volt and use ten hertz. So there is our signal looking good. I go even a little bit faster, about 50 hertz. That should be enough bandwidth for the amplifier. Looks all fine. Uh -huh. Go have a hard time to trigger on this one.
Okay, what we can do is change the range. So right now it's on 10 volt range. As you can see right over here. Like so. Let me see if I can combine the picture. There we go. You guys can see what we're looking at. Set one volt range. Okay, signal looks good. Exact match of the of the input. And hundred volts, of course, will give nothing. Let's use different path. Now we can do even smaller signal. Zero point one volt. There we go. Now go one volt. Now we go hundred millivolts. And nothing happens. So let's go ten millivolts. Signal is real tiny. Now I can set 10 millivolt range. We'll get it, but with big offset. This is where it's almost. One volt per division, so it's nearly two and a half volts offset down. You can set back to 10 hertz. And this offset is there. Let's apply some DC voltage. So right now 10, 10 millivolt DC. So we read about uh, minus 1.2 volts on the amplifier output. Let's apply zero volts, and we read minus two point two. We apply plus ten millivolts, ten millivolts, and minus ten millivolts. So apply minus 10 millivolts, it goes even lower, minus 3.2. I would think it should be around zero. So instead, we have this big F, FOXA. Let's see on the, on the other stages what, where we are getting this offset from. If it's one of those JFETs still destroyed,
So again, I measured this point, preamp output, and input. So what I'm more interested in to see what this line, this is basically low noise input stage input before it goes through the, all the chopping and reversing and stuff. So we can measure this node. And probably would be easier to do it just right in front of this uh, MOSFET pair. So that's what we will do. We can connect the probe and then we can see. Q611, pin 3. Q611, pin 3. There we go. What is nice about the PO? 92 package steps, it's easy to probe them and hook the clip. Alright, so I see just 41 millivolts in there. And let's apply some vapor. What we get. There we go. Nice and focused. So multiply zero volts. division now I will apply 10 vol 10 millivolts it is applied so it went up about 10 millivolts I think let's see yep minus 22 Minus 12. So if I go 20 millivolts, then it will go to 2 millivolts. Oh, pretty close. Okay, so we have this big offset. And it hurts. That's uh, what looks like oscillation, that's just because of the bad grounding. Uh, I don't think it's really there. Let's double check that. Yep. So just because I use single crocodile clip for the ground. drive this signal here. And we can start that. By insulating things.
So the signal that we're reading here is this thick green line. So there is the high voltage bootstrap buffer, U601. Mm. I have this input resistor 1K and 601. I didn't have replaced it yet. So this is still original, and in theory, if it's damaged, it could have caused the uh, some current taken from this resistor and drive the signal too low. And it's totally separated, goes to the input channel mask. So. This path on the low, it's all used only for 100 volts. So we don't need this for 10 millivolts testing. So together with the OPAM Q6, not OPAM, JFAT Q672, that disconnects the stuff from the 100 volt range. All right, so let's remove those two guys and see how it goes. So one and that JFAT switch. Let's remove those guys. Maybe I'll change the lens. a little bit. It gives maybe like a 
hundred cuties yesterday doing exactly that for like whole day. And now we need to remove another guy. So I just remove this Q601. Now I can remove the 672. Let's find where is 672. Thank you, right next to the input. I believe I'm right. There it is, the picture. So, as you can see, there is the, this is that high voltage divider. I'll highlight it in a different color. There we go. So, the input from the red terminal here. It goes, 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 goes to this L602, L601, connects to the input of the divider, and then output, all protected by guard trace, connects to our JFET 672, and then goes to the input stage. So if this JFET is bad, perhaps it could cause some signal corruption. One of the JFETs was uh, this one. The Q625 was cause uh, that voltage is on this section and it had gate shorted to the uh, one of the uh, I think it was source with like 10 ohm resistance. Oh, all right. Let's remove that guy. Right over there. There we go. Now it's removed. Now the high voltage section is completely removed from the main signal. Now well, we can see what that does. I can connect the probe back. Signal apply. Whoa. 
Unlikely delta zero function is broken too. Have these huge spikes. I guess I should show you what I'm seeing. The purple line is the LNA output. I supply the fuel voltage 10 millivolts. So we we'll get minus 1.2, and at zero volts we'll get minus 2.1. So the output is about the same. Let me show what happens when you enable auto zero. Now we enable front end out to zero. Uh, here we go. Signal. 
This is again. Uh, almost 25 volts. Almost 22 volts. 66. We can change the speed rate. 25 and be okay. And this is fast. Okay. Looking for that. Well, the zero is Idea, shall we? Okay, this is what goes into the ADC. Activity going on. Nineteen volts. Okay. Did you send me over what? It's a 30 millivolt. Hmm. So the yellow is ADC input. Let's take the single shot. So we can kind of see, see the pattern there. There are like five five readings happening. Each of them have two stages. Hmm. Let's apply some AC, shall we? channel uh, 
I want to get the calibrator output to the scope so we can also course correlate that. Now we can disable auto zero. Let's see what's going on. Maybe I just go this one. Front auto zero. No. And then signal cleans up. So yellow is AD in. And it's 10 volt per division. So that's 15 volts. Output from the low noise amplifier, and we have our signal, which is 30 millivolts. Let's say 10 millivolts. So as you can see, the signal is clipped. Mm. I think I know what to look for. There we go. Then I think if I go high, oh, so hundred millivolt range doesn't have this clipping issue. Let's try hundred millivolt. If it does the same thing, nope. There is no problem with 100 millivolt, just small clipping on the bottom. So that offset is not from ADC or the input ADC preamp, it's from the LMA. Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. I'm um, looking at schematics, so let's see if this guy would be a suspect. Because as you can see, basically this line is, let me make it colorful, is taking the input right from the U630.
Let's check these guys, shall we? Because they are sitting right at the signal. Channel to hello. Six six five. And the six six five is right over there near the blown resistor. Now uh, let's move the camera back in here. Anybody sleeping yet? This is not very exciting. Just probably shooting off good old blown meter. Right, suspect JFET remote. I'm a little bit concerned about that out of zero stuff. I'm not sure if it should be like that with those huge spikes. Because after all, this is nanovoltmeter, so it's a fairly sensitive instrument. And it's if there is circuit with generating huge 15 volt peak to peak spikes, that definitely would be a problem for the sensitive measurements. Jeffets that I can use for the time being. Hmm. If I can find them. Go DGP for the rescue. 
MMBF 5457. Usual job log JFAT. Once I know that the function is good, I'll order the proper replacement MOSFETs with the same or better spec than the original part. Six six three, which is right next to it. Uh, let me find a better photo. Q six six three. Here is the high resolution photo. So the 665 is this guy right in there. And as you can see, this resistor was exploded and spilled all its guts all over this section. So, and it connected to the essentially same node as all this stuff. Cal enable. So we can remove it for now because we don't do auto cal. We are not there yet. J2611 
let's see how it goes. is going all crazy. Oh, I think I lost my camera. Oh boy. So I'll have to restart. Oh, there we go. Maybe not. So this is with the everything enabled. Let's output 100 millivolt. Of nasty stuff. And the yellow is the ADE. Capture. The hundred millivolts. Ten million. 
okay now it is not clicking it could be better now we can disable auto zero Disable ADC auto zero. Look at that. Now we have no clipping on the bottom, so indeed this helps. And the signal right in the center. So let's set zero volts AC. Oh zero volt DC. Look at that, we get some progress. So essentially we just down in the noise. Uh, so looking good for now. We can probably even set zero volts rail yeah this is look much better let's change the rate okay 5 MPLC has some problems. Probably. It's probably out of zero. Maybe it's worth to use. What strikes me is kind of random. this spike the yellow is a AD input so here we have the signal that down there and then we hmm. But you always see the spikes up and down in random fashion. Maybe not so random. It's up, down, middle, up, up, down, middle, up, down, up, up, down, middle, up. Hmm. I wish there, there would be some theory of operation for this unit, but. I don't think Keithley will ever release that to us. So we are on our own. And if I use fast and PLC, then it's just have multiple of those jumps. And they are much faster. But if I use just one, it's hmm, still happening. Do we have all the other zeros enabled? Or disabled, I should say. Uh huh. Front filtering. Oh. Nope. Yeah. How do I get? I don't want that. Uh, get 
chceme tam stringnúť No, the system is kind of convoluted. Ah, okay. Now I see. Aha. So when you change the, let me show you. Right now, auto zero is disabled. But if I change to one and PLC, then it gets enabled automatically. Why? Change the rate. Enabled. Anyway, now we have the clean signal waveform. So let's set filter. Even the filter is not stable. It should be. It should stay on. Set rail. Yep. And then apply one volt, uh, one millivolt. One millivolt. There we go. Pretty close. Even that this is with half of the board replaced. Could be worse. So we just need to fix that out to zero and stuff. And then we can troubleshoot other ranges. Let's try to move up. Okay. How about three? How about four? How about five? Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, 12.5 15 Ah How about 13? Nope 12.6 Okay So it trips around Ah, uh, twelve sixty five. What are my probes connected to? Uh, you mean in the meter? 
in the meter probes are connected to uh, well one connection is our input which is this guy channel 2 high uh, channel 1 high I'm sorry this guy over here then the second probe is connected to the LMA stage output this preamp output and the yellow probe is connected to the signal which goes to the ADC So now it's stage working since correctly. So we have 10 millivolts and that's amplified to around 1 volt. And if I apply negative, then it should be negative 1 volt. So that's pretty good. And I can show you my source just for the sake of completeness. So the input connected right over there, white cable. Goes, 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 and arrives right over here. This is our test source. So it's in 10 millivolts. And I can you can follow if I apply zero volts, then scope goes to almost zero. One millivolt gives hundred millivolts. Now plus the offset in the scope. 5 millivolts, 500 millivolts, negative, everything looks good, and yeah, the probe connections, that's the LMA output. Is the LMA output and that's the ADC input. And that's the input front end stage. And there is nothing out of there. Nobody there. Plenty room for battery. Let's try other ranges, shall we? So, and the are 100 millivolts. Let's do the same test. Zero volt. And don't forget to turn off the auto zero. Oh, when you change the range, then auto zero does not auto enable which is the proper way to do things
So we can set well. Kind of wobbles back and forth. Should check the reference while they turn it. Just for the sake of it. Maybe later. And actually I noticed that the LM399 output is kind of low on this unit. But I don't really care about that much right now, as I'll be... I have some ideas to improve the reference on it. Maybe we can make 2182 even lower noise. But that's not the point right now, so we can... Yeah, this all looks good. And this game put towards quite a lot of offset. I'll be probably shooting that later. So, yes, let's do ten millivolts. There we go. Twenty. Uh, Speaking of 4.5 volts, and the LMA is So it's one to one. For the hundred millivolt, there is no amplification happening. Try hundred millivolt. Yeah, that's about right. It's negative polarity. Okay. About one millivolt, negative polarity. Okay. Minus the offset, it looks okay. Uh, let's go one volt range. Amplification 
actually the same. Hold on a second. I think it's using different path because the whole front end stuff is is only used for 10 millivolt range. So measuring LMA is useless. I think it will just track supply one volt. There is one volt. So it's almost 10. Okay. And negative. Negative fine. Try zero. Do the rail. One volt. Zero point one. Zero point five. One volt. Wave. 10 hertz maybe 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.9 okay this one looks okay Mm, we can measure AC plus DC mode. There we go. We can try 50 hertz. No funny business under the girls. Is looking good. One kilohertz. And now let's enable auto zero and see all the hell breaks loose. Capture maybe get hundred hertz. Yep. So let me capture ten mega samples, single capture. So the good waveform to look. Mm. 
now we can zoom in and look at some interesting points. I lost the signals a little. And we didn't, don't need preamp. So here we can see how the auto zero works. So you have one stage is the input. You can see the waveform from the input goes to the ABC, that's the yellow line. Then we get this connection. That's when the first step of out of zero uh, happening. Let's see how long is that. Should be the same time as the waveform. Right around there. So that takes about 87 milliseconds. And then the next step is another zero stage. Oh, oh. About the same time, 87. And then we the whole procedure repeats again. So essentially every measurement is three measurements. One is signal, one is zero, and one is, I guess, negative zero. This is kind of interesting. And also, hmm, I think one is zero. Oh, actually, no. Okay. The steps are different size, so. We have small steps, small steps. Small step, big step. Small step, smaller step. Really big step. Hmm. Uh, uh, I have a suspicion that it might be wrong. an idea. What we can do is, because we know the gain of the, yeah, the whole thing looks like this. Maybe whatever the uh, meter used for the zero reference is broken, or have the incorrect signal generated. That could cause excessive jumping, as we see. Let me save this waveform. And then we can go ahead and... What? Save waveform. Uh, one tall. One of them. Thank you very much. Okay, very form. Okay, to say. Oh. We will do. Oh, not the reference. Destination is into the file. Thank you very much. It will take a little bit. Mm. 
there is a question in the checkbox if I replaced anything. Well, uh, if this can justify for anything, then yes. This is the parts replaced so far. Oh, just a couple I see here and there. Let's check the volt range, uh, and then we can think what we do next. And more thing. Okay. Zero volts. There's a huge offset on the 10 volt range. One volt. Two volts. And the gain is off. I can see already. Three volts. Four volts. Five volts. Six volts. Seven volts. Nine volts. Ten volts. Let's see what I need to set to get those two. Oh, that noise shouldn't be there. There we go. So that's set 10.22935 volts. Let's set negative and negative is way off. So actually negative is correct. 10 volts. Yeah. So the offset only on positive side. That is interesting. Hmm. Minus one volt. I said minus. There we go. Okay. So whatever it is on the positive side, that's what causes extra offset. Hmm. I wish what the scope would save a little bit faster and that would be nice. Kind of on the slow side. Hmm. 
I'm not so sure it's out of zero. I'm not saying that out of zero is fine, it's probably still fail, but I want to see the oscillogram on the ADC input and see what's going on there. Because essentially this the input stage should be symmetrical. So we have the input signal, go go go. So Q six six four, I think it's already replaced. Yes, indeed it is. I uh, used the uh, Chromatic package to end 4993, which is higher voltage. Then these two resistors, I replaced them before. U665, we just replaced it uh, some hour ago. And I'm not sure the schematics for this is correct. And there is OP28282. And that guy, 638. Hmm. I replaced this op amp, but with the, not with the new, new part. And uh, maybe we trace back schematic where this goes. That probably would be a good idea. Okay, finally it's safe. Uh, how do I disable the waveform? Yeah, there we go. Go away. So. much information now uh, auto zero enable that's what happened oh yes disable auto zero Okay, minus one zero volt relative minus one volt. Okay, one volt. Uh, okay, ten volt. And minus 10 volts. Oh, guess that's the battery. Should buy a power supply for the camera. already have two batteries <laughs> well I have seven batteries Okay. 
Okay. Camera is back in business. Yes, indeed, these are uh, Nikon batteries for my D800, which I use for record this live stream together with the webcam. it again positive 10 volts we have 99777 negative is pretty close so let's see the waveform and this time I want to see also There we go. Uh, one faster. And there's our signal. So ten volt goes right directly to the DC input. 10 volts without any uh-huh but it goes in the opposite polarity so now we have that positive voltage on the input and indeed we get incorrect voltage on the at the ADC input so Somebody had fun. Somebody had fun. All right, so what we do now? Maybe we 
can trace back. Uh, so this signal gets incorrect voltage. Let's see what's happening on the main output. On this node. I like this. Check that. Use our scope and measure channel number three. So we get minus ten. That's what we expect. And let's set positive voltage again. Here we get nine point seven. So what we can do is to check who gives that nasty offset. Also, there is an interesting question about what are the similarities between the KFT2182 and older unit KFT182. Actually, I happen to have 182M, so sitting right over there, waiting for its calibration. Sorry about fuel foot angle. So actually I'll be comparing this meter together with our fresh patient after its repair and together with the, that, this one that's the older version of 2182 Right now it's logging my 10 volt reference together with the freshly calibrated 2001 and other friends. Uh, experimental, but you can guess it. And the reference is question, in question is that box right over there. Ooh. Yeah, that's my primary 10 volt reference on the battery power. And I also do some other tests on the, on the side. These are my good old trusty 2002. And neglected key side power supply and LTZ reference chips waiting for the resistors. All right, that was a short tour. So now we can actually go back to the scope and find the missing nanovolts. Who eat our nanovolts? There we go. That's about right exposure.
Uh, let me check something. All right, the short break was off, so let's go back to it. I think what I'll do is to start from the beginning, channel one high, and trace where we lose those millivolts. So it will be rather easy to do. Just use the scope probe and check on the points. I'll relocate the camera a little bit so we can see see better. Uh, so we'll find the location without breaking stuff. That would be nice. There we go. Probably will work. You can even see the screen. The light is kind of off. Whoa. Wow. Well. Maybe I should remove that. Like that. Maybe a little bit closer. Hmm. Remove the probe from the LCR meter. There we go. Well, I guess this is the best I can do. Yep.
Should be okay. Let's hunt for missing votes. So well, we can start from the input. There we go. Ten zero eight. And we can go Q664, Q664, ah, 2.47 Okay Now well, here is a little experiment uh -huh. U639 Fire me over here. Nine point four seven there. Uh, let's check something. You talking about this cap? These caps are Nichi on high temperature, 150 degrees rated caps. Uh, shall we turn off the light so you can see better? Focus the camera so you can actually see. <laughs> Sorry about all the trouble. There you go. I put the high temperature caps because of the proximity right to the next 12 DOs. Thank you, Keithley, for design. This whole stuff gets pretty hot. So all these caps are replaced. And since we are here, I can actually overview a little. So I cleaned all the mess right over there. That's all nice and cleaned and repaired. So I replaced Two of these guys. That's original was LM394 dual MPN pairs. Right now it's analog device mod 12. Those are expensive. Then I replaced all the switches, the G444s, 421s. Then I replaced two protection MOSFETs. Uh, that's for channel one. Replace some of the digital stuff in here. There was op amp missing, this OPA 177F. 
uh, Zener missing. I put the SOD one. Uh, replaced a couple of the Optos. This one and that one. And they replaced another GG switch. So that's and also for the JFETs, I replaced two N seven thousands. This four. Then replace uh, JFETs. This metal cans. Original uh, were TO ninety two. And then I replace two two pairs of the uh, selected Kifli JFETs with the one linear system cell SK three eight nine A. Later, this is not the final. Later, I'll replace it with the proper JFETs, or maybe I'll just put another LSK three eight two uh, three eight nine on the second position if the performance is good. Maybe it's actually better. That's one of the things I was thinking to test is try different JFETs and see if I can get lower noise out of the meter. And the original were 2SK170. And PLCC devices are firmware ROMs. This meter runs 2182A firmware version C02. There is already newer C07. And there is no issue there. So, and also there was missing BNC connector for the analog output. Oops, I installed that one back in. No problem there. Okay. Let's get back to our problem. Yeah, I spent basically whole day yesterday just swapping parts and mm, checking stuff. So let me turn back my LED light so I can see stuff. So, oh, where was I? Uh, Q664. So, I can show the part of schematics about that. Q664. Right over here. So this JF is supposed to be working only for 0 0.1 or 1, 1, 1 volt ranges. That's this good description from the service menu. Hmm. But I think the schematics section for this part is not correct. Because in the connection like this, it doesn't make any sense how the circuit would work. But this resistor, I know for sure, was exploded. So both of these resistors are replaced. Uh, let's check this OP8282. U638. One, nine point seven. Uh, sorry, fifteen uh, seven. Ten point ten zero zero eight. Ten point fifteen six and seven. I believe they are connected. 
probably like that. Oops. It would make sense, it would be like a buffer. Pin number five. And point seven. So this append working fine. I can put the uh, label. Oh, it's actually 10 volt in there, no problems. Maybe make a different color. There we go. So now we have R699. And point eight one side, and point eight another side. So this all looks good. Maybe I should add the camera here. What do you guys think? Let me do that. Video capture device out of existence. There we go. Make it small. Okay. So we can go ahead and follow up. Now we can check what's voltage here. Six eight one twenty K. Twenty K was fine. At least it measured 20k and didn't have any burn marks or anything. 10.08. And another side of it, 9.72. So this point is 9.72. Hmm. Let's check in three of Q with protein. Yes, we can show. Yes, nine point seven two. about pin number three of the missing op-amp just to make sure it's all consistent pin one pin number three yep what we have also six seven two is removed G switch. If used for only for A cal. You can make sure it's all closed. Six four three. This is actually this switch is what is different in EC2182 A and not A because the usual meter, the normal one older does not have this AKL circuitry. It have simpler AKL. So, okay, pin one. 
by Wolf Team Eight. Five Team Nine. Five and Team Sixteen. If you find another wolf. Okay. Team 14. If you find another wolf. Hmm? So this is not connected to to the same note. It makes no sense. This was three. Yeah, what's going on here? to check that hmm there are two other boys this is Q662 Small SMD package. Q six twenty, not six six two. Yeah, that should be Q620. It's made a correction. Q620. Oops. And Q621. There we go. Let's check this section. If this uh, JF had shot, then it could drive have the guard driving the output signal, and then cause the stuff to fail. Nine four seven nine and nine seventy. So. I do believe that the guard should be the same voltage as the signal, not with the offset. And let's test gate. Oh boy, gate is 9.47. That is not correct. How about 620? 5.1 on gate, 947, 972. And actually 620 I replaced before. Okay, let's turn off and do the replacement for 20 Output off. Turn off the meter, and I will need to remove the cap. Just lift the leg. I'll give you a real close look on what I'm doing here. 
if I can find something which I can put the camera on. No, I guess that will work. the camera. Here it is to focus. There we go. Now you have the front seat. Young cat is a little bit in the way. Transistor is that small tiny SOG23. Right here. And off he goes. Okay. I wanted to replace two other fits. Okay, now put the cap back in. Okay, here's the win. 
Now remove the two channel channel two heads. They're just for protection, so uh, I want you to do it. It's actually quite a smart move to have two channels. Because then nanovolt meter can be used to measure divider ratios and different signal ratios and stuff like that. Make it very nice and handy. Also, the calibration of this meter is rather easy, and I already have everything that's required for it, including one of the special boxes. This guy, no thermal divider. Very useful box. So it takes the input right over there and input from the 10 volt reference and device to this value. So very handy too. Fly back. Sorry about all the shaking. Channel two switching pads.
Alright, let's fire it up, let's see what's going on now. Save for us. Okay, this is very promising. Now we don't have the huge offset, and the auto zero is enabled, I think. Yeah, auto zero is enabled. I definitely can see on the it on the scope. Let's turn on. Let's actually disable it, or maybe leave it enabled. Uh, yeah. uh, let's set one volt. Positive. Output enable. Look at that. No more crazy error. And this is without a zero enable. We'll see some wobble wobble, but this looks good now. Just the camera. That's my table with paper now. <laughs> Schematics of the nanovoltmeter with all the dead parts. Bits and pieces. Okay. 
Funny enough, even without any relative Molotov calibration, <laughs> it's bang on. <laughs> How good is that? Let's do zero. Zero looks okay. Let's see the waveform. Oh, not that one. Let me apply, uh, first let's make it faster, okay, and now set to 1 volt. Negative one volt. Looking great. Uh, one volt. One hundred hertz. Now I want to see. This is actually the C waveform. Our channel 3. That's the preamp. No, channel 3 is not connected to anything. Look at me. Let's connect to preamp. There we go. Single shot. So yellow is ADC. It's matching the preamp exactly. No offsets. No funny business. Let's sort. Everything to the center. There we go. Single. Okay. This out of zero stuff still kind of confuses me a little. Sure, it should do that funky stuff. This is kind of strange. Doesn't say. So, out of space. Say it's tough. What's going on? Mm 
Well, anyway, let's go back to DC voltage. One volt DC. What I can do now is we can test all the ranges except 100 volts. Because for that one, we need to add the stuff and parts per remote. Let me adjust the camera setup a little so I can show you both source and meter. Uh, back to the 5 MPLC. This is no relative, this is actual measurement. Go back to the 10 nanovolt, uh, 10 millivolt range. Now we have the zero. That well. This is the nanovolt. So you cannot expect to have the stable zero 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 readings there. I think. Let me say below out of zero. Uh, no filtering. Whatever that means. And out of zero. Now we can do the relative again. We can set 10 millivolts. There we go. Very good. So, 12 millivolts. Overflow. Eleven. Eleven one, two, three. I remember it was twelve forty five before. Not that it matter. No. Okay, well, that's fine. Then millivolt negative. All good. Zero volts. 
Now let's do one volt, uh, one hundred millivolts. Zero volts. Let's do the rail again. Uh, yeah. Ten millivolts. Eleven. Fifty. One hundred minus all good ninety eight seven six five four three two. Almost there. Let's do one volt. Do the relative. And do a rainbow filter. This is kind of interesting, it's going up and down, up and down. Maybe I should just remove the probes. And put some covers. Because I have the aircon on, so it would cause some drafts, and that could cause that up and down stuff. Or we could have still some subdual oscillations somewhere. These covers are plastic, they are not for shielding, they are for protecting from the air movement. Because when the air moves, you have the temperature gradients. And the components in the meter will not be on the same temperature. And when you are talking about microvolts and nanovolts, that will cause thermocouple effects. So your voltage will be affected by that. And by adding the covers, you essentially reduce that effect to a minimum, or to the lesser extent. Yes, and another uh, source of the noise is different, uh, like uh, PWM generators and switching power supplies, LED lights, and all that. So essentially you want everything shielded and protected. But for now we don't really care because we're just doing quick tests. Yeah, this one doesn't go in. No, it's the wrong cover. Though Yeah, 
There we go. Nope. Okay. Have this MOSFET screw too. I don't know. Everything okay. Okay. This rate of the wobble seem to change a little. But still going up and down. Just lower. Oh, good enough for our test now. Let's do one volt. There we go. Let's do... Zero point nine, zero point eight, zero point five, negative. All right. Negative one volt. Okay, negative 1.1, no problems there, positive, yep, let's do 10 volts. Zero volts. That's good, doesn't, stuff doesn't jump around. Let's do one volt. Yay! Two volts. I don't think it get be gets better than that. And this is without the calibration. Don't forget about it. No calibration. <laughs> Three volts. Honestly, I didn't expect that I'll be able to fix it live like that. And granted, surely there could be many issues still left, like the drift or excessive noise or other stuff. But this is a promising start. I just received this meter one week ago on Monday. Kind of funny, I had to replace essentially everything. All the active components in the front end. 
probably not all of them were dead, but mm, it's less time consuming to just replace with the new parts instead of uh, checking the old parts, making test jigs and all that. Nine volts. Ten. Funny, it's actually uh, close to the beating of the uh, ten volt cold meter, which sits right over there uh. but of course the source is different Let's do negative 10 volt. Negative 11. Uh, positive 11. And negative. Okay. Minus 9. Seven zero. Uh, I should block the range. Ten volt range block zero. Yeah, there is offset from the ca cable connections and calibrator, so we should remove that. Minus nine. Yeah, there we go. Positive ten. Let's enable auto zero. And let's move the filter. And there is still. No wobble. Oh, I don't think that's correct. Let's go around again. Enable other auto zeros. Front auto zero. Enable. And front end filter enable. Let's do that. I'm not sure if it's so you the the last digit is microvolt. So uh, oh, you shouldn't wobble plus minus ten microvolts like that. Uh, 
Let's set to zero. Yeah, looks good. Okay, let's see what's going on. Let's go to the lowest range. I'm actually curious. Let's actually compare to that other meter. Up. And abort the test. the short and go to the lowest range Let's set relative and let's set here relative. Yep. You can see the difference. A lot of jumps, which uh, should not be there. Cost could be because I have just on the front end just a wire connected right there. So I can actually connect the uh, input jack and test just like it's supposed to be. But before I do that, I need to find it. I just saw it the other day. So the connection, the input is this demo connector board, which use special version uh, copper only, no plating, no gold plating, no nothing. 
and it also have the small thermal sensor chip. It's a LAM35. Yeah, it's a LAM35D. And then it has direct connection to the board. So let me turn the meter off and install the thing. Okay.
disconnecting this wire. There we go. I guess we can power on and connect the short and see what happens. So, here's the connector. And we connect it together. Now let's connect short. And no, we still have this excessive noise. So that didn't go away anywhere. So that will mean that more troubleshooting, but more subtle one will be required. What we can do is check the channel too. Huh. Channel 2 looks better. Channel 2 is actually using different signal path. So this is good direction probably would be to look into what's the difference. And channel 2, oh okay, maybe channel 2 is not better. Channel 2 is only 10, doesn't have 10, my, uh, 10 millivolt range. Well, oh, that's hundred. So that's what. Uh, 
80 millivolts, or 8 millivolts, 8 microvolts kind of work. And channel 2 have minus 3. Okay, well, it will be interesting to compare them. Also, I'm a bit curious about the reference voltage on this meter, so perhaps for the end of this stream, I'll connect one of my 2002 uh, to the LM399 output, and we can just make sure that the LM399 is okay. I'm sure it is, but... The last time I checked uh, the reference, that this one right there, was a little bit low. Also I can check 10 volt and connect, connect my reference input. There we go. Pretty good for 10 volts without calibration. Too bad this uh, series does not have any self-test diagnostics, like for that test. We only have display and key, that's it. Maybe there is a secret mode, like in the other key flip, to enable the testing. So, if anybody knows, let us know. Check that the sensor is correct. Let's see uh, how to configure the temperature. Then it's oh, sensor internal. Okay. I believe this is the temperature of the board. Oh. That little chip in there, so I can use the soldering tip to get close and it should go up. Yep, it works as is expected. So that function works. <laughs> the reference turn off the meter and 
find the proper wire. And this will go. And connect to one of my meters. So we connect to our four R eight hundred and we need this one. And the negative is low. L five oh two. Hmm, that one from the bottom side. We don't have access for that. C509, let's just double check. Okay, connection is made. You can show the reference. Can get the camera high enough. There we go. Now the meter is off. Let me turn it on. Yep. 
Yep, it's indeed very low. <laughs> Usually I uh, LM399s generate about 6.9, 6.95, but this one is 6.25. I wonder if that is normal. Maybe the 50 meter use low current for the LM399 circuitry. So that, as a result, gives the lower voltage. I connected back short, so you can see. So there. Can we say about the auto zero stuff? That's it. Thank you all guys for watching and see you next time. That's it for now.